Do your parents often tell you to be careful and take your time, watch your surroundings? My mom says it to me all the time, every day. She knows that I'm always in a hurry for something. It started when I was born. I didn't even wait until I was nine months to be born. I was born in eight. I was growing up by leaps and bounds. I was always curious about things and asking constant questions and couldn't stand in one place for a long time. Because of this, my mom called me battery boy sometimes. While I was talking about my childhood, I completely forgot about myself. Hi, I'm Jay. You'd think that why did he talk so much about his childhood? Well, it's because of my excessive haste played a cruel trick on me. Sit back. My story's gonna be just as good as the blockbuster this summer. I'm a regular high school student who studies, I mean, goes to after school classes and activities and my parents always wanted me to do some kind of second activity, something important, so I'd learn self-discipline, more deliberate actions. That's what dad thought that, and that's what mom believed. Well, of all the available sections and clubs and activities in our area, there were knitting, drawing, and baseball. None of the above uh, suited me, and I began to look for other options. When I came across an ad for youth soccer, I was interested in the place they practice. A large green field where they play, and lots of pictures from various competitions. I was really excited. Immediately, I imagined myself in the team, running on the field, passing the ball, and scoring goals, and, and a bunch of goals too. And the whole stadium was cheering for me, and I was standing proudly and waving to everybody. Yeah, those are the dreams. But I decided not to leave it just a dream and immediately called to sign up. On the other end of the line, I was politely invited to a trial session, and I happily agreed. I was not even embarrassed by the proximity of the section. I talked to my parents, they were supportive, and my dad said that he'd drive me to soccer, so the distance was not a problem. So I started my classes. I really liked my new hobby, and the team of guys was great. We quickly found a common language and became friends. Often after practice, we'd walk home together on the days my dad couldn't pick me up. One day, we had a game against one of the schools. Everything didn't go according to plan, and uh, the opposing team was stuck in traffic. And our coach had a cold and could barely stand on his feet. A couple of guys on my team forgot their cleats in a hurry, and in general, the atmosphere was kind of tense. In general, we wanted to play as soon as possible, then go home. The team also didn't go well from the start, and we played to a draw. Although, on any other day, we would have won for sure. In the locker room, everyone was in a bad mood, and so it happened that the guys didn't wait for each other, and each went home one by one. I, seeing that everything had split up, asked my dad if he could pick me up. Dad said that he had a lot of work to do, and unfortunately could not make it. Son, just order a cab. It'll be quicker, he said. So I did. I called Newbert, and after dictating the address, I went outside. A few minutes later, some operator called me and told me that the blue cab was waiting in front of the building. I looked around and saw the car right by the stairs. I ran up and jumped in, and after giving the address of the house, I calmly sat down on my phone and started watching videos. <laughs> Funny videos on TikTok. The car didn't move. Hey, um, can we go now? I said demandingly. The older man turned to me and, th and through his teeth said, Why? I didn't let up. I called a cab and want to go home. And you're stalling and taking your time. What's that all about? The cab driver looked at me suspiciously and asked where I wanted to go. I dictated the address again, and this time he smiled upon hearing what neighborhood we were going to. Hmm, not easy to live in your neighborhood. Rich people. I ignored his words and decided not to respond. God, what a strange dude. Very suspicious. I'll never call for this car. I wish I could get home sooner though. Surprisingly, the cab driver was going some other way. We had been driving for about 10 minutes and we should have been already halfway there. And then the phone rang and I picked up the receiver and heard a disgruntled voice. Uh, I can't wait any longer. I've been standing here forever. If you change your mind and go, you should have canceled it on your app and pay the fine. That was my cab driver. Then who am I riding with? Who's driving? Where are we going? Ah! I wanted to scream, but there was like a lump in my throat and goosebumps ran all over my body. So I had to calm down. I'm driving in a strange car 
with a stranger that I didn't order driving me in the middle of nowhere. I heard a thumping noise somewhere on the side. It was barely perceptible. I was imagining it. I heard it again, louder. Turned around to see where it was coming from, and when I heard a faint, Help! Help! God, those sounds sound like the voice were coming from the trunk. The cabbie had taken someone hostage, and he's trying to kill us. Oh God, oh God, oh my God. I thought I blacked out for a second. My head was spinning, and I couldn't figure out what to do. The driver's menacing voice brought me out of the state of shock. What kind of phone do you have? Maybe I could keep it as a keepsake. And then he turned around and held out his hand to take the phone. I knew I couldn't wait. Uh, I'm getting car sick. Uh, I feel sick. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna puke in your car. I clamped my hands all over my mouth as if the contents were about to come out. Wait, 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 you don't have to leave your lunch here. Here, I'll stop at the curb, get out. The car slowed down. I ran like a bullet to the side, supposedly to clear my stomach. The cab driver didn't leave, but waited for me by the roadside. If it was not for the man in the trunk, I would have run away a long time, but I do not intend to abandon a man in trouble. I heard a noise behind me, and I realized that the cab driver was coming into my direction. I was sitting on the ground, holding my supposedly sore stomach, waiting for him to come to me. I said, why are you? Bang! I hit the perpetrator in the head with my phone with all my might, and he fell to the ground in surprise. I ran to my car, got a t-shirt out of my bag, and came back and tied the criminal's cab driver's hands with it. He cursed at me, but couldn't do anything. I ran to the car, opened the trunk, and saw the frightened guy there. He told me that he had parked the car and was waiting for his girlfriend to arrive. She was running late apparently, so the guy decided to take a nap. Next thing he remembers, someone opened the door sharply and hit the guy with something heavy. We called the police, and the miscreant was apprehended. As it turned out, he was a well-known car thief in the city, and with dozens of similar incidents under his belt. The police searched for a long time, and thanks to me, they caught him. As a thank you for saving his life, the guy gave me a bicycle. I became a celebrity in my town as a local hero, and the mayor himself gave me a certificate of merit and the title of honorary citizen. My parents were madly proud of me, and my mom said that this time my haste actually saved my life and helped me catch the dangerous criminal. I dreamed of glory, and I got it. Though not on the soccer field yet, but there's more to come. If you liked the video, then please comment down below, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe.